hello welcome to this lesson of our study of you know integral equations okay so in this lesson we just go through you know, one methods or one of the methods that we use to solve freedom's integral equations okay so in our previous lesson we discussed how you can solve voltage integral equation okay especially my first lesson on conversion of voltage integral equation to ordinary differential equation okay so after conversing the use your idea in how to solve ODEs to solve it okay so that is the method you use to solve water integral equation now with respect to freedoms we have several methods okay so this method i'm coming to use is what we call the exact method okay so the exact method too we have some approximations method we'll talk about them but then let's start with the first one that is the exact method of solving freedoms integral equation Okay, if you have not subscribed to the channel kindly subscribe okay so let's start so solve the freedom's integral equation below okay so this is the integral equation we have y of x equals this okay the whole of this x squared minus integral from zero to uh, you can see this okay so to solve this what you have to do is first of all check the kernel that is why oh uh, that is the most important thing or the reason behind we going to learn some types of candles okay so check this candle what type of candle is this okay so this candle here is a separable candle yes we said a separable candle is a candle that can be you know expressed as product of two functions one as a function of x only and the other as a function of t only so we can write xt the candle as x times t where we can call this x our g of x and call this t our h of t okay so our h of t so then with this with this idea that we have here what we can say is that we can come and then separate the kernel inside the integral sign okay so let's start our question or our task here is y of x is equal to s squared okay minus integral let me write it all integral from 0 to 1 x t y of t dt right this is our question so what you can do here is you see y of x is equal to s squared since we are integrating with respect to t okay let me let me rewrite it all because okay s squared minus now since we are integrating with respect to t under the integral sign every variable apart from t will become a constant okay every variable apart from t so we can pull that constant out when you are doing integration and you have constants present what you can do is you can push or pull the constant out of the integral sign you will pull x out meaning we can separate it as some g of s times t of s okay then times t y of t dt so you can see that under the integral sign okay from here to here everything here is a function of t t is a function of t and we have y of t as well and so it means that after everything we can integrate and get a function of t okay we integrate after integrating this we'll get another function of t we can call it k of t we can call it and p of t that is the integrand of this one that is the answer we'll get for the integration of a function of t now after that when you since this is um an integration that is a finite integration or fi definite integral let me call it that way and we are integrating from zero to one it means after evaluating this whole integral we'll get a constant say c okay so but we don't know since y of t is not given so we can't do this so all that we do is that we say okay y of x should be equal to some s squared minus x times the result we'll get here and we know that if you do a finite integration of some function okay of one variable that is here everything here is a function of t okay you will get a c a constant c okay I hope, I hope this makes sense so we get a constant you can call it q however you want to call it okay that is your own way of calling it all right so with this you know that is y of x okay where 
so you state that where your c is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 t y of t dt so we stated that the whole of this should represent a constant c if that is the case then we should go and then look for c and come and put it here and that will be all right but already we know that y of x is giving us this part let's call this equation one okay and call this equation two so if, from equation one we know that let me use the green pen here y of x is equal to s squared minus x times some constant c y of every x is given as that so it means y of 2 okay if i ask you y of 2 then it will be equal to 2 squared wherever i see x i put 2 there okay it will be 2 squared minus 2 times c y of 5 will be equal to okay um sorry my pen is misbehaving y of 5 will be equal to 5 squared minus 5c so it means that y of everything is just putting that thing you are talking about or you are referring to in place of x so therefore since our c is having some y of t that we don't know here let's evaluate y of t using the idea we have in y of x okay so if you could see we said y of everything so let's say y of 2 gave us something y of 5 gave us something but let's say y of t then it means wherever i see x i put my t there so it becomes t squared minus tc right i hope this is cool this is okay right it makes sense because you say y of everything is expressed as that y of every x is this so this time if one x is equal to t that is what we have okay therefore it means that our c which is equal to integral from 0 to 1 t times y of t can be simplified the t and this will be equal to integral from 0 to 1 t times our y of t is giving us t squared minus tc dt okay now we are getting a function here we've gotten a known function here okay so this c will be equal to integral from 0 to 1 there's a limit t times t squared we get t cubed okay minus t squared c dt all of these as one okay so we go ahead and integrate each term so c is equal to let me rewrite it back for you 0 to 1 t cubed minus t squared c dt okay so this has become a very simple polynomial function for you to integrate so c is equal to how do you go about it integrate t q when you get one over four let me write it well one over four t to the power four for you minus one over three t cubed c because c is a constant that is what we've already said then we evaluate everything from zero to one okay so you can put a bracket here so first of all c is equal to putting one the upper limit inside okay you put that parameter inside and you get 1 over 4 times t to the power 1 to the power 4 and that will be just 1 minus putting that same thing 1 to the power 3 we get 1 cube c minus putting 0 in place of the t's okay so if i put 0 in the first t to the power 4 i'll get 0 when i put 0 in t to the power 3 i'll get 0 so it means that that place will go okay so in case the lower limit was something different and you put it there and subtract as well okay so it means c is equal to that so i can bring this i can group the c's okay so c plus one over three c is equal to one over four okay now with this this is algebra so how you go about it is your own case um i wouldn't say that but i would say know how you go about solving this side okay i mean this side so this the the lcm here is one okay let me go through it step by step one over c plus sorry c over one plus one over three c is equal to one over four okay so the lcm here at the left side of the equation is just one so i have three like that the lcm there is three okay so one goes into three three times then times c you have three c plus 3 goes into 3, 1 times this c because 1 over 3c 
okay let me erasing right it's the same as one over three is the same as c over three okay so i have c here three goes into three three one times ten times c gets c is equal to one over four okay three c plus three c will give me four c so i have four c over three is equal to one over four okay if you could solve the fraction here very fast that is no problem so what i have to do is just simply multiply every each term by three okay i pre multiply here by three this will cancel this and i'll multiply here by three as well okay so i'll get 4c is equal to 3 over 4 here is just algebra so however you do it you is your own way so you divide both sides by 4 we have 4c is equal to 3 over 4 okay so you divide both side by 4 this 4 then divide this side by 4 okay you get c is equal to 3 over 16 that is the c value okay so we have in in the beginning we said that our function y of x that is a solution now because s squared minus xc this is what we had so all i wanted to do is just go and find our c and we'll, we'll, we'll get our solution okay here we know our c to be this so you just come and put it there then our solution to the question is y of x is equal to s squared minus x into c is 3 over 16. this means that my y of x is equal to s squared minus 3x over 16. however you want to do it that is it okay so that is the solution of the integral equation that was given okay so if you want to check that indeed this is a, a solution to the integral equation just put this y of x back like i did in the beginning that is a solution of to an integral equation how we went about putting the um, definitions there and making sure that it will register an identity okay all right so thank you and kindly subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet comment on my session in the comment section below like my videos and also share it. okay see you next time